Okay, gentlemen. Good morning, all of you. In this module, we are going to discuss about Kirchhoff's law and also the series and parallel circuits. And when the components are placed in series and parallel circuits, what is the final equivalent circuit that we can make out of those? So let's begin. Yeah, I heard about Kirchhoff the first time when I was in class twelfth. Second time I heard about it when I was in my first year of B Tech Marine Engineering. Then after that I kept hearing it in MEO class for even sometimes in on ship as well. To be very honest, ship pe main iska practical implication jada nahi dekha. But agar main bolu ki it is not important, no it is. So it is a part of our electrical package which Chief Engineer Orvin Singh sir has shot. Just go through this video and see ki yar why it is important, how important is. There are the, there are two Kirchhoff's law that we uh, are going to discuss here. The first one is. the sum of the current entering in the node is equal to the sum of the current leaving the node okay so that's again the concept is very much straight and forward here so let's say there is a junction point which we call as node so it can be formed when there are two or three wires coming and joining one point so let's say that this is one wire this is another this is another and this is the another one four wires right okay so when was one wire is bringing some current let's say another wire is also bringing some current third wire is also bringing some current all of this current then it will come out from here so amount of entering current should be equal to amount of exiting current from any junction or if any node so this is what we call as kirchhoff's law when we talking about the current right so kirchhoff's current law all right kcl what is what we call that okay so we can see here 10 amps is coming to the node and 2 amps is going away if we do not know if we do not know this value we can easily calculate if 10 amps is going and 2 amps is coming out in this wire of course it has to come out the remaining that is left so what is left out of when we subtract 10 minus 2 is 8 so 8 will be going out from this wire so you can easily calculate if you do not know all of the current values you can easily calculate if you know at least all but one so that means if you, let's say there are four wires you must know these three values to calculate the fourth value this is what we can do if it let's say this is i1 this is i2 this is i3 so this i do not know so this is nothing but i1 plus i2 plus i3 because all of them are converging and what comes out is the summation of all three right so i hope this concept is understood now let's move to the next concept which is nothing but kirchhoff's voltage law so which states that the sum of the sum of all the potential differences in a closed circuit is equal to 0 sum of all the potential differences across a circuit or across a closed circuit is 0 so let us try and understand this part and we'll also do one calculation now what you can see in front of you is a battery of 20 volts and there are two resistances x and y so let's say x is 1 ohm and y is 3 ohm so using ohm's law here what is the amount of current that is flowing in the circuit so we know in series the resistances will add so totally equivalent circuit will have a resistance of 3 plus 1 that is 4 ohms so resistance is 4 ohms voltage is 20 v is equal to ir or i is equal to v upon r fine so v is 20 i equivalent is 3 plus 1 4 so it is nothing but 20 upon 4 so the my current becomes 
5 amps. So the current that is flowing in the circuit is 5 amps. 5 amps. Okay. Also, we know that potential dropped in any resistance is nothing but you please remember the formula. If, if there is a resistance of value R and the current flowing through the R is I, then the potential drop in the resistance R is nothing but IR. Same like Ohm's law only. So this is the potential dropped from this point to this point because the current is in this direction. So of course the potential here should be more than here. So how much more is equal to I into R. So using the Kirchhoff's voltage law here, let's understand what he what is uh, trying trying to what he is trying to convey here. Let's say we take a point. Let's say this point is P1. And we take different points P2. Here this is P3. This is P4. P3, P4 are same potential because there is no load in between. So P3 is equal to P4. So there is no voltage drop. There is no resistance. We assume that only resistances are here. Wire is having no resistance. So P3 will be equal to P4. Now across this loop, the total potential difference, sum of all the potential difference should be equal to 0. So we start from this point and we complete the loop, finally the total potential drop should be equal to 0. That is what being said. So let's start to make a calculation here. So let me drop this off. So how much was the current? 5 amps. This is 1 ohm. This is 3 ohm. So starting from this point P1, then P2, then P3 and P4. So we'll start from this point P1. So let's say potential at P1 of course let's say it's P1 only. Or you can say V voltage at P1 is Vp1 voltage at point P1 and when we move up the loop, well now we are going across the loop. So picking this point voltage is this much. Now you tell me when we go this side will my voltage add up or it is going low. It basically is going up because my battery is helping my voltage to grow up. So from this point to this point I will have a positive voltage and which is nothing but 20 volts. Alright, okay. Then what happens in this resistance to the voltage? Will it drop or will, will it rise? It will drop because this is what resistance do. Right? If the current is flowing through the resistance, they will drop the potential. How much? V is equal to I R. Potential drop will be nothing but current into resistance. What is the current? 5 ohms 1, 5 into 1, 1. So 5 into 1 is 5. That is 5 voltage, 5 volts drop, minus 5. Okay. And at this and this potential are same. I told you there is no load in between them. So these potentials are same. The next component which drops the voltage is this. So 5 amps and 3 ohms. 5 into 3, 15, 15 volts of drop here, 15 volts of drop. So now we reach to this point, okay, so this point is nothing but P1 only. So we reached point P1 only, right, so A is equal to point 
P1. So we started from point P1 only and we reached the point P, finally P1 because this is the what is left is what a potential at P1 right. So this is my equation right. So if you see that if you just do the math they will cut out minus 15 minus 5 plus 20 so 20 minus 20 so it's it's a check sum 0 is equal to 0 that means we are right here that means when you go across the loop then finally the potential difference becomes 0 so this is how we can use the this thing uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law and when do we use these normally see this is very simple equation you could have used normally Ohm's law to uh, work upon this and this could have given you result but sometimes when there are so many uh, different sub circuits in a circuit all right so there are many parallel loops of a circuit all having some resistance resistance values and this is a power source you have, may have one more power source here one more resistance so sometimes to solve these circuits it become difficult to use ohm's law so th at that time we are going these two law they will be helping us to resolve those circuits so I hope this gives you a good understanding of what Kirchhoff's law is. The two laws which are helping us, they basically are extension of Ohm's law only and they are helping us in calculating or basically in, in resolving these kind of circuit situations. Where the circuit is not just one loop, it could be multiple loops. So then we will use these laws here. Right? So this part is clear.